start the recording and I have to do the announcement. Okay, uh, hello everybody. We are with Fabian Bocart from uh, Artnet, Artnet's Chief Operating Officer. We are gonna talk about art data today. Uh, thank you, Fabian. Uh, so uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, and we're gonna listen to you and all you're gonna tell, uh, tell us uh, on art, uh, art data. Okay, sure. So first, uh, thank you, Eileen, for inviting me uh, this morning for me, this afternoon for you, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'm actually chief data scientist at Artnet, and I'm supervising all the data science efforts. Artnet is a, um, a relatively uh, large company by art market standards, at least. Uh, we are 130 employees in New York, and so most of us are involved in managing a uh, database about uh, art auction data. So the, the concept of Artnet consists in offering several services. And I will first introduce uh, Artnet as a case, and then we'll, we'll view what other initiatives are there in the art market. But I'll talk about what I know best, which is Artnet. So we first and foremost offer a prize database. So the prize database is a database of all auction lots sold in the world, um, with a few exceptions. And we offer information about which lots sold, for what price, and where. So that's uh, the main product of Artnet and what Artnet is best known for. And of course, with those data, we can then do data science, which is uh, what we will be discussing later. Um, another thing we do at Artnet, because we have such a massive platform um, online, we offer galleries the opportunity to present their artists through gallery pages. And so uh, galleries can ask Artnet to have a specific page on our website where they can introduce their artists and put for sale artworks. And as you can imagine, in the uh, last year, this product was very successful as many galleries had to switch online. And so we were happy to support the art world um, and offering a gateway. And another product we have is an online auction house, which is similar to what you will find at Sotheby's or Christie's online, except we made it our specialty, so that is, um, we have tremendous experience in buying uh, and selling artworks online on behalf of our clients. And now I believe the minimum price we accept at Artnet is $5,000 per artwork, and it can go up to $200,000, $300,000. This is our price range. Um, and again, this year was a fantastic year for Artnet, given uh, the switch to online auctions globally. And finally, our, one of our most successful product and best known is Artnet News. And Artnet News is led by Andrew Goldstein, who is our editor in chief. And it's one of the most important news publications um, in the art world. We have in excess of 3 million. Uh, viewers on our platform every month that stay informed about the art world. And again, it relates to the database in the sense that we use data science and data at our disposal to find scoops, to find information um, in the data that we can present to our audience. So that's um, the introduction of what Artnet is. And my role so at Artnet is to uh, crunch the data, but also augment the data. We work constantly to bring new data to our customers. Um, we um, work on finding new ways to interpret the data. Uh, and I will go uh, in, in a bit more details about uh, new innovative things that we are looking at. So that's for Artnet, uh, Eileen, and what I do at in this company. 
So do you, do you have a presentation to, to share with us or? Well, I have, I, have, I prepared mm -hmm. uh, something about art indices so mm -hmm. that I can share. So one important aspect um, about the uh, art market and art data is the, the notion of art indices. And so this is part, I, I have this presentation, which is part of a class I give at uh, UZH at Zurich. Um, so let me find a way to share my screen. By the way, ArtNet and Art Art Price are uh, competitors, right? On on data uh, like data market, data sharing of auction data market. So we are uh, registered to Art Price. So students know uh, Art Price uh, rather than ArtNet. Yeah. So yeah, Art Price has also a database um, of prices. They don't have the, the rest of our services, but I'm not going to comment on art price data if you're using that. Okay. But switch to Artnet as soon as you can, Aileen. Yes, yes. <laughs> is... uh, you know, we're going to sign uh, the, the next uh, subscription will be with Artnet. Perfect, perfect. But I will get some commission. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Um, you'll have a nice uh, bouquet of flowers. <laughs> okay. So, um, the price indices are something that we tend to see in economics, okay, such as um, stock price indices or consumer price indices, producer price indices, and so on. So they are made to track the evolution of um, prices through time. So the main interest of having a price index for a stock is that it gives a fair view of how the market is doing, if it's going up or if it's going down. So without having the need to look at stock or each individual stock in the stock market, you can see how a market is doing. And that's a bit the same idea that um, we are using at Artnet about um, art prices. So I will take here Felix Valoton instead of looking at individually every single artwork and what the prices are going, because all artworks are different, it's difficult to estimate if prices are going up or down. We offer an art index, which is basically a summary of the price trajectory of the artists. So, um, in this case, you can see that the price, the average price, corrected for other factors. I'm not going to go into those details in that session, but went from approximately $100,000 back in 2001, all the way up to more than 500 in 2014. So it means that this artist had seen its prices go times five in uh, 14 years. So that's uh, the interest of art indices. And this is what um, we produce at Artnet. And the question um, as to why data science, and I'm taking price index as the first example in particular, is relevant, is that it's great for collectors and also consultants to um, check market timing and spotting trends. Okay, so this is um, an example from last year. An artist called Richard Hamilton had its prices really peaking end of the year. And you could see the skyrocketing prices. And so from there, a consultant can start wondering what's going on in the market. Why is, are those prices accelerating and so on. So in the case of this artist, yes. Okay, Fabian, I'm, uh, maybe you're gonna say, but it is, is it a sign of a speculation uh, around that artist, uh, such a jump? Uh, all of yeah, actually, uh, th that's, that's, that's exactly that. 
we have a lot of speculation around that artist, but there is a reason, so there is always a fundamental. And the story here is quite funny. Not funny because there is some drama behind, but it's interesting at least. Um, the artist was a street artist in, in the 80s, in the 70s, in New York City. And he was contemporary to um, Andy Warhol and, and all those guys, Basquiat. And so the difference is that he survived, actually. So he stayed alive until 2018. And the problem with Richard Hamilton, which was known in the market, unfortunately, the man was a cocaine addict. And um, it had horrible consequences on his life, including he would sell his art systematically at very low prices um, to finance his addiction or to finance cure against his addiction, alternatively, of course, um, which is a complete drama for everybody, especially for the artists. And so he would flood the market constantly with his works. But in 2018, after many years of struggling against his addiction, he unfortunately passed out, passed away. Um, what happens is the dealers in charge of his estates finally got a grip on the supply. And they could um, start marketing the artists at price levels uh, consistent with his role in art history. So this large spike that you see um, and that the index is showing is actually due to the work of dealers, the stop, obviously because the artist was dead, of new production and a fundamental work in promoting the artist by the dealers. So it is a spike, it is speculative, but um, there is a story behind it. And this is What's interesting about those indices is that you can see changes in price and so on, but at the end of the day, there is always a story. There is always a reason why those prices behave uh, in such or such way. And so that you need to use your own art market inside information to understand what is going on. So that's that was the story about Richard Hamilton. Um, another great use for those indices, which we love doing at Artnet, it's pitching clients because an index offers you the possibility to show a trend. Is the price going up or going down? And so that's an absolute uh, key tool to pitch your client and, and tell, okay, your, the, the prices are going up, but we think they're still going to go up and this as evidenced by this index and we think we sh you should buy or the opposite the index has been going down and we think the prices will keep dropping, so maybe it's time to sell. So that's, um, that's used in the, in the industry also to convince and show our clients um, the type of move they should do in the market. It's used by insurers. Um, interestingly, insurers call their clients whenever the prices go up because obviously it's interesting for insurers to have a premium increasing when art prices go up. So there are two reasons why insurers call their clients when art indices go up. One, they can get higher premium because they can tell them, look at the indices, the prices went up. So we suggest you increase the value of your collection as a whole in terms of insurance premium the consequence of which is higher premiums. So the insurance makes more money. But also the insurers look at the indices to control fraud risk because the higher the prices, especially when prices go abnormally high, the higher the prices, the riskier they are that people will commit fraud. All of a sudden, there can be a fire in a basement or floods that come that were unexpected. So the risk of fraud increases too. So insurers always keep a look on the indices and the arts market price levels in general. Um, you certainly have heard about art funds or collector clubs that pitch their clients based on indices. Um, this is 
the advertising by Masterworks, which is a company selling shares into artworks. And initially, because they didn't have a track record, they will use art price uh, global index, I think, a high price, no, a price hundreds index um, to show that prices go up and so on. So this is also a compelling way to convince investors to buy art. So that's that's the another way art indices and data are used in the art market. Um, the largest, most commonly used um, art indices, type of art indices in the art market are for actually legal reasons. And that I've seen and I see um, regularly in our trade is that legal practitioners are interested in valuing artworks in the past. Uh, what I mean is if there was a, for instance, inheritance um, 10 years ago, a brother got a painting worth at the time $1 million. His sister got another one worth $1 million. 10 years later, one is worth $15 million. The other one is still worth $1 million. Lawyers want to present to the judge the evidence that the price was fair um, at the time of the inheritance. So they will use an index and come back in the past and show, yes, this artist experienced a times 15 increase in prices. Or no, it's unlikely that this artist experienced a times 15 increase in prices and instead there was a problem when valuing the artworks uh, 15 years ago. So this is um, a very common um, use of art indices too. And we cater to our clients uh, for those legal needs um, as well. Okay, and the final, but actually um, initial way indices were built is to look into academia and the question was, can we consider art as an investment? And so that is something uh, that um, academics have looked into um, a lot and are still looking into it to debate, do we make money when buying artworks? And the consensus is yes, but. So the consensus is if you buy a portfolio rep representative of the art market, you, sh you are not going to beat stocks or bonds when it comes to um, returns. But if you cherry pick and you pick the right artworks, then maybe you'll make money out of it. Um, and I think Aileen, you contributed to that field as well. If I'm yeah, not I, 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 keep, I keep working on that. But I, more and more, I believe that um, art uh, creates more like a, a buzz around. So the, the person who purchases art creates uh, lots of marketing. Now, more and more, I believe art is a good uh, marketing tool rather than uh, an, an investment tool. I mean, uh, for, for big big buyers. I mean, when I think of um, Maizeva, Yusako Maizeva, who bought uh, the big painting of the head of Basquiat in 2017, uh, I guess, for about uh, $110 million. I mean, nobody knew his name. Uh, nobody knew that he had uh, a company, you know, uh, a sportswear company in Japan. So I think uh, it, it contributes more uh, to, to, to marketing purposes. Now, 